Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth stimulus package and news update. We have a lot of news to get into in today's video, but first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so kicking off today's video, someone recently paged an empty shelf show at the airport. Airport is paging empty shelf show. Please meet your party at our side baggage behind carousel six. Carousel six passenger empty shelf Joe. Please meet your party behind carousel six. It's unknown at this time if anyone responded. Let's go. Brandon Chance have also been spreading like wildfire. Okay. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. And by the way, let's go, Brandon. Okay, all right. Let's go, Brandon. In some other news, our elected leaders in the Senate will be returning today where they hope to make progress on a couple of different of their bills. Our elected constituents in the House will be getting one more day of recess, however, and won't be returning to Washington until tomorrow. So first up will be to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill by October 31st. That's the self-imposed deadline Democrats have placed upon themselves which also happens to be the same day that the program for federal service transportation expires. Being that progressive Democrats in the House will need an agreed to number on the amount of spending, as well as what will be in the reconciliation package, before allowing for the infrastructure bill to pass, they'll need to get moving quickly. At this point, being that it's October 18th, they'll have less than two weeks to reach an agreement. And right now, Joe Manchin's top line number is around $1.5 to $2 trillion, whereas progressive Democrats have yet to really call out what they would like to see. As recently reported by the New York Times, Joe Manchin told the White House that he is firmly against a clean electricity program. And being that this is one of the most powerful parts of Joseph Biden's climate agenda, which would eventually replace our nation's coal and gas fire power plants with wind, solar, and nuclear energy, this is a huge blow for climate change activists. Manchin believes that we are currently in a climate crisis and should be taking such drastic measures at this time. A spokeswoman for Manchin released a statement saying, Senator Manchin has clearly expressed his concerns about using taxpayer dollars to pay private companies to do things they're already doing. He continues to support efforts to combat climate change while protecting American energy independence and ensuring our energy reliability. Then the other senator in West Virginia, Republican Shelley Moore Capito, said that she was extremely opposed to the clean electricity program due to the fact that it's designed to ultimately eliminate coal and natural gas from our electricity mix and would be absolutely devastating for their state of West Virginia. Basically, this program, which would cost around $150 billion, would reward utilities that switch from burning fossil fuels to renewable energy sources and penalize those that do not. So it looks like that's a policy Democrats will need to remove from the bill. Furthermore, Axios reported over the weekend on what some of the other red lines were for Senator Manchin. First off, Senator Joe Manchin has told the White House that the child tax credit must include a firm work requirement and family income cap in the $60,000 range, which means that people will need to work to get the child tax credit payment whereas in the current bill, there is no work requirement. And also he's listing this $60,000 income cap range in which people would need to make at most, or maybe a phase out period. But in the current plan, $60,000 is not what the income cap limit would be. And the current plan is actually much higher. Saying why it matters, while Manchin's demands would dramatically weaken one of President Biden's signature programs to help working families, they also would reduce these packages' overall costs. So yes, this would definitely lower the overall cost if he was going to force people to work to get the child tax credit and then also lower the income cap range. It says that would make it easier for the pivotal senator to support a final package potentially higher than Manchin's previous $1.5 trillion top line. At the same time, progressives would have a hard time accepting the changes Manchin is demanding. They would also fundamentally alter a program the president funded for one year in the 
$2 trillion relief package passed back in March. Manchin's office declined to comment on Axios' report. Furthermore, it says the big picture, Manchin and Senator Kirsten Sinema held a call with House Interest lawmakers last Wednesday in which the senators detailed some of their specific concerns about Biden's $3.5 trillion social spending program. They also discussed the White House's decision to link the package to approval of the separate $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill and demand of House progressives. Sinema told lawmakers she will not vote for the social spending plan until the House passes the infrastructure bill according to Reuters. So this is a big deal. This is obviously the biggest thing for Kirsten Sinema right now. She's a little bit pissed off that progressive Democrats in the House are holding up the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which should have the votes to pass before they first pass the social spending plan. And of course, we have the progressive Democrats who are a little bit afraid at this point in time. They don't want us to go ahead and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill and then have moderate Democrats relax a little bit and then perhaps not get these social spending plans. So both sides are trying to put pressure on each other and both sides are getting kind of pissed at each other over that fact. Furthermore, it says that neither Manchin nor Sinema endorsed Biden's compromise price for the social spending plan in the $1.9 trillion to $2.2 trillion range. This is obviously huge as well because there were prior reports that maybe Manchin would go up to $2.2 trillion. Now it seems that Manchin's top line may actually just be like $1.5 trillion, which is also means that being that progressive Democrats want to spend around $3.5 trillion at least, that would mean they're around $2 trillion apart, which is a lot of money. Manchin also continues to privately tell colleagues the president's clean electricity performance program, a cornerstone in Democrats' plan to achieve zero carbon electricity, is a non-starter. And we just previously discussed that. So it looks like that's going to be something that needs to be removed from the bill. I'm not sure whether or not progressive Democrats will be willing to remove it from the bill, but that's probably something that's going to have to happen because Joe Manchin is not going to vote for the plan if that's in the final bill. Go deeper. Well, Manchin has previously indicated he wanted progressives to pick one of Biden's three programs to help working families. He now seems more favorably disposed to policies that target families with young children in need. In addition to the Paraback CTC, Manchin is open to Biden's $450 billion plan to subsidize daycare and offer free universal preschool that people familiar with the matter told Axios. Manchin, however, wants to impose stricter income caps on the daycare subsidies while keeping preschool free for everyone as it already is in West Virginia. The senator is less interested in the $225 billion to $450 billion paid family leave proposal or $400 billion for a new program to provide care for the elderly and disabled people, according to people familiar with the matter. So it seems like he's more for the CTC, although he wants to pare it back, force people to work, force people to pay taxes, but then only make up to around $60,000. Whereas he's not so much for the proposal to provide care for elderly, and he's not so much for the proposal for paid family leave. So those are some of the things that he's calling for. And again, $60,000 seems to be like his income cap in a way. And this is really huge stuff because up to this point in time, we were a bit unsure on which programs Manchin was wanting to remove. Okay, so just as a fresh reminder, even though our elected leaders have not yet placed a fourth relief payment in either of the bills currently being discussed, there are still a couple of different petitions calling for one. First up, the Senior Citizens League is calling for a one-time $1,400 payment, which would be sent to seniors. Also, just a couple of weeks back, the chairman of the Senior Citizens League, Rick Delaney, sent letters to all of our leaders in Congress proposing this piece of legislation be in one of the bills, or perhaps in a separate bill. In the letter, he wrote, We've heard from thousands of them who have exhausted their retirement savings, who have started eating just one meal a day, starting cutting their pills in half because they can't afford their prescription drugs, to list just a few of the drastic steps so many had to take because of what inflation has done to them this year. Many have written to us that our government has forgotten about us. A $1,400 stimulus check for Social Security recipients could be a way to get extra non-taxable income to them. And once again, this would be huge because even though the cost of living adjustment will be going up next year, again, that's three months from now, and inflation has been so huge, it's so hard for people on fixed incomes right now to afford groceries, to afford gasoline, to pretty much afford anything. Furthermore, another petition which is currently on change.org is now up to nearly 3 million signatures. According to the website, once the petition does reach 3 million signatures, it will become one of the most signed petitions on their platform. 
This petition calls for $2,000 per month for every single American. So if you are interested in either of these petitions, I will go ahead and leave a link in the description box below. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Weeble, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. To receive the first stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day, and I'll see you in the next video.